Hi, this is Maya from the Worldwide Good News, and I have Patrick Combs with me. He is, well, try to actually uh, say what he is. Was I was reading and reading and reading, and it's just so amazing because you do so many things. I mean, you're the speaker, you have a one-man show, you have books, you are just transforming the world. You also have this new project called Might Club, which is amazing. But where do we start from, from Patrick? Like, where do you want to start to tell us about the wonderful world of you? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Maya. It's, it's really a pleasure to meet you. The wonderful world of me, you know, after having all these different, seemingly different things going on, you know, I had to boil them down for myself once to figure out what is the common thread. And I think there is a common thread. And it's that most of all, I'm a guy that likes to get to a stage and do something in some form that is uplifting. And so that has put me on the stage as a speaker a lot in my life for 18 or 19 years now, full time, to inspire people or, or train people on something I may be able to share. But then it also surprisingly, and your bliss will surprise you, <laughs> led me to just entertain people in theaters around the world with a comedic show. But I think, I think in common is, is a performer. You know, and and, and uh, myself liking to be creative, as creative as I can be. So those are, and all, always applying it to try and lift up other people. Yeah, so that's great. And I'm, I mean, one of the stories, I mean, I'm going to start with the small story and bring it to Might Club because I think it's such a beautiful progression. So the Man, uh, Man One Bank Zero book came from just a story that ha that actually happened to you. Uh, you cashed a what well, you looked like a bogus check, you know, one of those things we get, and it actually cashed out. And this is just incredible, uh, just to show that try something and it might happen. That story, you know, that story took on a life of its own and uh, well, well beyond um, initially what I thought I was doing. I'll be really brief about it. Initially, when I was 27 years old, I thought that I was just sticking this fake, ridiculous junk mail check into my bank as a perfectly obvious joke. And I could see it no other way. I could see nothing except the impossibility of anything except my bank laughing that I would put a, a one of these Reader's Digest fake checks in, in as a joke. And I didn't sign it or anything. Make a long story short, the bank cashed it on accident. I got into an epic standoff with my bank but not over keeping the money to be honest with you but over the bank just being nice i just was asking the bank to be nice about the way they were asking for it back because they were asking with threats and lies and threats and lies and so for me it became important like geez you know you shouldn't be able to treat a customer 12 years with threats and lies you should just call me up and ask me nicely so the standoff caught uh, international media attention and really became a thing in of itself. And then in the end, I, I won my battle against the bank, hence the title Man Won Bank Zero. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the bank finally did what was very difficult for them, which is tell the truth. And so, um, but then, then out of that, this is an extraordinary story, and I just told you hard, cold facts. But mm -hmm. it, the story is so extraordinary that it is the basis of my two-hour uh, theater play, and I guess I, I wrote a book on it. And that book's been writ that book has been read by over a million people, and so it's made this little tiny act made mm -hmm. quite a splash. But what's to me would be important to me in the context of this interview is not that I put a check in at 27 years old, um, but that I navigated that based on first based on integrity was really important in principle um, but but once it was behind me then i navigated based on bliss and what i discovered is that in telling this story to people there was a real bliss for me and then even in learning to write write it down in a book there was a real bliss an unexpected bliss to trying to write a book that was all one story and so I just followed those relentlessly without any view whatsoever of a reward. There was no apparent reward for following my bliss into theater. That is supposed to be a loser move, to be honest with you. It's supposed to really land you in a very difficult place. You know, by loser, I just mean everybody will tell you there's no money in theater. There's very little opportunities. You're not going to go anywhere. And so, but... But I don't, you know, my life experience hasn't been that, that you should follow your bliss because there are always tremendous rewards for you on the other side of your bliss. 
-hmm. on the other side of my bliss was a spectacularly, unbelievably successful show. Yeah. Even though I started off really bad at doing the at doing the uh, performance, <laughs> but but it definitely rocked your bliss. I mean, you followed your bliss, which is um, it's such a powerful thing because a lot of people are reluctant, they're afraid, they think that if they follow their bliss, something bad has happened because they're not supposed to enjoy themselves, they're not supposed to enjoy what really they want to do, and you have actually, in your own way, proved that that is wrong and by following it you never know what, what to expect but you, you actually also remove the expectation from that so you just let it be i tell you you know there are, there are a couple things that that i would say you can ex i totally appreciate what you just said that that you don't have to bring expectation into it and you can't know what to expect except i followed my bliss now into speaking and mm -hmm. i followed my bliss into theater performance i followed my bliss into book writing and then the creation of a couple companies. And so there are a couple things I would tell you that you fully, totally can expect. Um, number one is expect miracles to come to your rescue. Mm -hmm. and that's the primary thing that I really would love everybody on planet Earth to experience is that the reason why in the beginning you look at your bliss and you think, I can't do that. And trust me, you're not different than me. You know, everybody looks at their bliss and thinks, <laughs> can't do that it just it looks so blissful that little me couldn't do that but you have to include that a miracle or miracles are going to come to your rescue and enable you to do things the second thing is when it's your bliss you can expect that it will make you a better person it will bring you alive and it will bring out talents in you that aren't apparent right now it will literally transform you and bring out big you and you can expect that so now imagine how far can you go and what kind of things can happen for you when your big you and miracles, astonishing miracles of people showing up and resources showing up in, in perfect events happening, come to your rescue to support you to go in that direction. That is what you can expect. And the last thing you can expect is that in the end, I don't know what your the rewards of your bliss will look like in the outside world, but I know what you can expect on the inside world, which is attainment. And attainment means a transformation on the inside where you become better in ways that you get to keep for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. now, the reason why Joseph Campbell called it bliss is because you also get to keep the feeling of just sheer bliss. It's it's joy magnified times 10. That's what bliss is. Yeah, yeah and, and I love Joseph Campbell or uh, Brian Johnson calls him Grandpa Joe. <laughs> so he is a... Uh, is definitely somebody to, to read and, and listen to and see. There's still a lot of YouTube clips you can see of him in his I think, 1970s famous uh, interview. The whole notion of following your bliss and just being courageous. And I think the, the word you're using right now is using might. And I love that you actually distinguish the um, word might that is the only word that both power and possibility. Uh, so real, a lot of thought went into just the word, but tell us a little bit more about how how did that happen? Like after all the years of speaking and book writing and shows, where, when did that come out? Well, it, it's, it started percolating about five years ago, at least in my mind, when I had the idea that, you know, when you're a, when you're a leader, in leader, you know, leader just means you're leading your own life, that you're one of the, if you're watching this video, trust me, you're either a leader now, and that's my, I suspect that, or you're, or you're, you're on your way. Because when you're a leader, but one thing you'll, you'll notice from being a leader, and I started noticing about five years ago, is that here comes my son. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, he, he's completely always welcome in my office. So. Hi. <laughs> Hi, good morning. So everybody, Hi. I'd love to introduce you. This is, the, this is, really, the, this is really the bliss in life. Is, mm -hmm. is getting to home. If you follow your bliss and, you know, you take risks and, and you, um, you, know, you go your entrepreneurial way, or, then uh, your kids get to your kids get you get to share more in your kids' lives, and they get to know what you do. So this is Will, everybody, named for Hi, Will. Will. There's a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye. That is bliss. Named after the great Will Rogers, also another person whose life really represents it. You can follow your bliss. So you know, so about five years ago, I started 
I have this really playful notion and the best notions that will move you forward to great places in your life are the playful notion. And the playful notion was, what if I could start writing who was in the world and I could start challenging them with secret assignments? That was actually the original idea for my club, that Maya, you might get an envelope in the mail. You wouldn't know who it came from, but it said, welcome to my club. I want you to sleep outside tonight, take a picture of you sleeping outside, and then mail it to this website and you will have completed your might assignment. Now I know individuals like myself would, you know, it would just be an intriguing game to keep the leaders, um, somebody pushing the leaders to, to stay on their edge. So it's funny how an idea can evolve because then this, this year when we officially launched Michael about a year ago, we just evolved the idea to, first of all, we need a word is not cliche because there's dreams, there's passion, there's purpose, they're all fantastic words except they also they're used a lot and so mm -hmm. we want a new word for a new philosophy that really we really wanted to usher people and the, and so might became that word meaning power and possibility power meaning internal power possibility meaning that you work from possibility space in, in your life not from practicality or probability space the best things in life are creating when you work from what is possible not mm -hmm. what is probable a probable will keep you always trying to pay your bills. Possible, possibility space will keep you creating miracles. Yeah. And then the second thing, Maya, was very simple, and it was that in my club, we wanted in a shared way, in a shared community way, to wake up every day and do the work. And do the work is a phrase that um, the author Stephen Pressfield, who wrote the book The War of Art, really has the best definitions for um, do the work means that when you're following your bliss there is work to be done i have to hit that script writing all the time to make that theater show great it's the work of my bliss but it's still i have to put in the hours so in my club we we developed a software system a software human system to support amazing people who are to keep doing the work even when you wake up some days and you don't feel like it exactly. and guaranteed yeah. Everybody who's trying to do something great wakes up on days and doesn't feel like doing the work. You know, eventually you learn through discipline and through rewards that to do the work on a continuous basis produces miracles. So my club is to support amazing people to do amazing things. That's really powerful and it's so true. A lot of people are in the notion that if you if you want something, if you think about it hard enough, you're going to get it. But a lot of people don't even talk about there is a lot of hard work that's meeting yourself there, meeting, I mean, I, I do yoga and there's a, a beautiful part of yoga is meet yourself on the mat, which is I don't feel like it, I'm tired, I'm achy, but the idea of getting on the mat every time to meet yourself there is exactly exactly what you're talking about, is that, that, that meeting yourself is, I say to a lot of friends, you know, one of the things that you know about me is I always show up. I sometimes don't feel like it, I don't want to do it, I'm having a bad day, but I'll show up. And that's part of it. Uh, that's exactly what you're talking about. And it's really powerful because a lot of people don't talk about it. Don't, don't talk about the actual doing the work. Maya br brilliantly said, and may I say that we have rules in my club that my club members actually learn over time. Rule number one in my club is showing up matters. Mm -hmm. Showing up matters. Just keep showing up. Now, what's invisible to the world, and in, in, uh, you're you would even be unaware of Maya, is that there's MikeClub.org, the website where we where we teach the philosophy and people blog about the philosophy. But there's also Mike Club itself, and members inside Mike Club are served up with an accountability support system every day of the week, which mm -hmm. means we're making videos in astonishingly if you will real raw inspiring videos and our members make them for our members and every morning we wake up as a community and the first thing we do in the morning is our our hour of mic time and in that mm -hmm. hour we get an inspirational video and then we choose what's most important and that's a very distinguishing factor that helps us live mighty lives is we start our day by intentionally picking what are the three most important actions or thoughts we will take first in our day and it sets the tone for the entire day, you know. So I love, I really love my. And the last thing I tell you is why, why at this point, after 18 years of doing inspirational speaking, is, and and some transformational coaching in my life, is might for me is 
is my shot at giving my my greatest gift to the to the world of um, you know to people that desire to helping people who desire to live their bliss and their dreams. Because Maya, in the world right now, there is inspirational speaking, and I love it, and I value it, and I do it, and it means an ins a speaker takes a stage, you watch them, and you can get a big hit out of that. It might change your life that day. Um, it might. There's also the world of coaching. You hire a coach, sometimes at a, at a really, really big cost. You meet with your coach once a week. It's a phenomenal model. It can really change your life. But there was nothing in between. So we built something in between so that if you're coaching once a week, but what about in between every day? Who comes to, who comes to you know, be at your side and say, we're in this together? And we built it in a way that um, is, in, is pennies. <laughs> it's like pennies to support somebody in, in this really effective way. So my gift through my club, hopefully, if you will, to a lot of people in the world, is now you have somebody actually supporting you every day to live your dream when you don't feel like it. And it doesn't cost much at all. It used to be that anybody could join it, but we switched it to nomination only because the quality of the community is so important to us because the community is really together that, mm -hmm. you know, we know we can get a high quality community by members being able to nominate members, you know. Mm, right. So that people attracting their tribe, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Which is great because, I mean, the internet is so big and vast and sometimes it is hard to actually control the quality if you just yeah. open it to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't yeah. build it, you know, again, like, and for us it wasn't a money play. They just loaded up yeah. with lots of people. For us it was, uh, you know, what we wanted most in our life, which was an incredible community supporting each other to do incredible things. Which is really, really powerful. And for people who want to actually so either see you or work with you or – here you say you're doing a lot of uh, touring. I know I heard from uh, from Lynn who's <laughs> doing a lot of touring. Uh, so where where are you going to next? Well, I I just came off of a uh, 23 city tour of Ireland, which was one of the most spectacular outcomes ever in my life, and that was to tour for my comedic one man show that we were talking about. My next stop is Sydney, Australia, to speak to a group of 250 entrepreneurs down there. And then I've got some dates in New York City coming up for a, a new show I've developed. You know, my, you know, the um, all the ways that there are to either see me speak or to work with me in coaching. I take individual clients occasionally, um, or to or to if somebody has a community and they'd like to do a teleseminar with me. Those are all at my website, patrickcombs.com. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to interact and. Um... The biggest question is what's what's next? I mean, you've got my club, you've got the touring. Is there anything else big on the horizon you'd like to share with us? Well, sure. You know, um, the big things for me, you know, big uh, big is less important to me than pure. So mm -hmm. That makes sense. You know, I know that makes sense to you. So, mm -hmm. it's not that they're big; it's that they're really pure in their in that they're really purposeful and blissful to me. And you know, I'm if you will. You know, I've I've done the work over 18 years to be pretty, to be fairly in alignment. I I you know I'd like to call it magnificent alignment with my bliss and my purpose. So there are continuations of that. But I'm very excited that I'm deep in the development now of my second one man show, and it's called Foolhardy. So mm -hmm. so when I get excited, I think about touring with a brand new show and telling a brand new story. And Foolhardy is a story that's very near and dear to my heart. Because it is the story of me trying to find my talent and my gift and my blessing in the world over the course of 20 years and having a ton of misfires. The other thing is I'm a big fan of, of the solo theater show now. And so now this is a really good case in point. So I'm going to grab a Tuesday night at a theater here in San Diego at a small 100 seat theater. And I'm going to have a Tuesday night there every night once a month. And I'm going to bring solo show performers to San Diego. And I've already run the numbers. And it's mm -hmm. there's no way for me to make money doing this at all. Mm -hmm. There's no way. And so, But so that prompts a question like, and I like to make money at things I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so why am I doing it? Because I'm not making decisions in my life based on if I'll make money. I'm, I'm making decisions based on is this an alignment in magnificent alignment with who I truly am and what brings me bliss. Mm -hmm. Now here's my prediction, and you know check back in a year, in three years, mm -hmm. I predict that somehow it will explode into something 
that is even bigger than I'm picturing and makes me money. Mm -hmm. Mathematically right now, there's no way for that to happen. Yeah. You know, that to me is following your bliss and, in, in, you know, in, in your life. So, um, and then the last thing is, is my club just getting, uh, you know, we have the big and big, big is, is we combine with a huge multi-million dollar company for Mike, and they're applying a team of programmers and, and the, literally the designer that designed Intel's most famous ad campaign. And they're, they think my club is a movement. They think it's mm -hmm. an international global movement. So they just took it under their wings for free. And they're going to pump up the software and the design and make a magazine out of Might also. And and we're going to reach a point where we can release Might to the world for free. That's great. That's wonderful. And it's needed because the people who really would show up, they're sh that would show up, they will, they'll need this. I, I know from talking to so many people, people don't know where to start. And having a support system and a community is so important. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, look at look at what you're doing for the world. Look mm -hmm. at your offering for the world. You're helping people know where to start, and you're giving people a beautiful, beautiful support system. You know, so I hope that everybody Thanks. watching the video will take a moment and share what Maya's doing on on your Facebook wall. A flower doesn't wake up in the morning and figure out how it's going to build. You know, how it's going to mm -hmm. invoice people for its beauty. You know, a flower wakes up. But we've got these flowers right here in the front of the yard, and they're particularly to the point because they close up at nighttime. You know. It amazes mm -hmm. me. It amazes me that there are many flowers that close at night. You know, it, it really demonstrates their intelligence. And then they open in the morning, you know. Well, they don't look around and say, I'm not going to open if I can't build for this. <laughs> they just open, you know, they give their gift. And, and so even when I'm posting on Facebook and stuff, I think I'm not posting because this will do anything for me. I don't, I don't really think it will. You know, you post because you have the thought and the desire to touch somebody else's life through your own voice. I have a YouTube channel now and, and I'm, and I set up a, uh, film studio. So I'm going to really make a lot of videos um, to, if you will, inspire and help people understand, um, you know, the path to, to living your bliss. So if you want to look for my YouTube channel, excellent, please do. And the last thing is, um, and this is big for me, is there is a crisis, a catastrophe going on in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And, and the, it's really affecting the women and the children of Somalia. And so right now, the most important thing in my life is being one of many people to just help call attention. So that's, you know, to, it's not a small crisis. It's actually an urgent, desperate, you know, outrageous, unreal crisis. And so I would just ask, I, I know that a, a video cast like this calls out heart-centered people. And so mm -hmm. if you're a heart-centered person, look, I'll be honest with you. When I post about Somalia on my Facebook page, the vast majority of people don't, don't even want to look. They've trained mm -hmm. themselves to not even look. So I feel like here is a place where heart-centered people gather. And please, if you just take a moment, you know, and find, find out through, through one, Bono's organization, one.org, what's going on in Somalia, go to the World Food Program and, um, and find out what's going on in the Horn of Africa, they also call it. And, and save a kid's life. Yeah, you know? uh, and it's really definitely important. Thank you for actually bringing that to the attention because really what is YouTube and, and social media and all of this is not to, is not but to unite us. And because we, we have, I mean, if you're on a computer, you have some money to give to a starving child. It doesn't need to be a lot. It can be $5, $3. You don't even know how much $3 can change a child's life if it's a meal today. And it means they can actually eat and not die. You know, think about the latte you're going to drink today. Don't drink it. Send it over. Well, you That's know, all. My kid, you know, my, my son will come in here. You know, every parent knows that you just wouldn't, you just never want to be a parent in that situation, you know, would love up your kids. And I'll say this one more thing, really good point about it doesn't matter how much you have to give. But, you know, there's, you can look at it two ways. You can say, well, if you don't have money to give, then post on Facebook, bring awareness to it. But. But for the first time, I'm thinking something different, and it's that, no, you, we, know, we know all of us have money to give. We know that all of us could come up with $3 or $5. But here's the power in doing that. When you send, them, when you send your $5, if that's all you got, to the World Food Program, it changes you on the inside. And once it changes you, it does. And you have to experience it to, to write the check. It will change you a little bit around that issue. You'll now be connected um, in an invested way to Somalia into these children and human beings there. 
But more importantly, you will then turn to somebody else in your life and you'll say, Somalia is important. I gave money to Somalia. Yeah. And because you actually gave money to Somalia, you'll say it differently to them. And they'll respond differently and now they'll give money. And so your your blessing to Somalia will turn will multiply many, many times. But thank you, Maya. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick, for your time and your you know, presence and everything that you do for the world. It's been really a pleasure and an honor um, yeah, to have you here today. So do me a favor. You're in you're in the city I lived in for 10 years. I left my heart in San Francisco. I love mm -hmm. it there. Please go out and enjoy. Uh, mm -hmm. Enjoy a cup of something at Cafe Gratitude for me in San Francisco. I will. And when you're here, I'm taking you to lunch there. Thank you. Uh, and this is Maya from the Worldwide Good News.